I'm the founder of SumUp. We are the leader in the European Empo space. That's mobile point of sale. We actually developed a, sm a small device. This one, you, many of you might have seen this. Can I see a quick show of hand who has ever used this device? It's not so bad, especially on a Thursday afternoon. Um, so this reader allows small merchants to easily and inexpensively accept card payments. Coming to Noah, to me, is very much like an institution. We started around the same time Marco and Jan started Noah, uh, somewhere in 2012, I would say. So we've been here every single year, first in London, then in Berlin, then Berlin and London. And it's a real joy to be here because you find the best investors all over Europe at this fair. And why do you come here? Because the sad life of founder is that you have to secure funds to build a beautiful product. So for us, that means year after year after year of fundraising. So if I walk around Noah today, it's very much like a family reunion because I spoke to like half the crowd already over the last five years. And this year, I'm honored to stay here on sp stand here on speech and introduce you to sum up. And now I realize this is probably the worst year for this because we are not fundraising anymore. We actually broke even last year and we're growing pretty well organically um, on that, on that uh, um, revenue where we doubled in the last 12 months. So now, instead of running after investors, I can focus really on the business, which is... Oh, great. We changed the slides around. Which um, is global car, is card acceptance brand. So why do we want to establish a card acceptance brand? It's because if you la look at the market we're in today, many people see the card reader, but what we really do in reality is we're doing card acceptance, just like the Edians, Stripes, and the other guys that have been, and uh, obviously Concardus with Marcos, that have been here on stage before me. But we do card acceptance at the physical point of sale. So if you look at the, at the map today of these card acceptance companies, it's a very fragmented market. Every single country has like 20, 30 acquirer PSPs, and they usually have two or three dominant ones. If you look at Germany, it's Concardus, BNP. If you go to the UK, it's Barclays. Obviously, Edian is pretty big in the Netherlands, um, BNP in, in France. But all of these traditional players, they have one thing in common. They're really, really big. So each of these logos probably is worth a billion, uh, has a billion valuation. And they're very much focused on their own market. So they're, while they're like in the online space, you often see acquirers that cover 10, 20 markets. At the physical point of sale, usually these companies are in their home market, or if you do Germany, Austria, Switzerland, you're probably one of the more adventurous ones. And why is this? It's because traditionally, this market was very much driven by human interaction, where somebody comes to your store, sells you card acceptance, installs a physical phone line, while now, with the power of cell phones in combination with internet at the point of sale, we are actually able to serve the same, mer save, same merchant in a much easier way at a global scale. If you look at the mobile point of scale, sale space, when we started out in 2012, there were probably, we were one of the first, but within like six to 12 months after launch, you had like 20, 30 players across Europe playing in this game. Everybody ordered a little dongle from China, and kind of was able to process on the cell phone. But then people realized this game is much more difficult than it seems, and it's much more on technology, operations, processes. And today, I think in the Western world, there are like three relevant companies. You all might have heard of Square. They're today in five markets across the world. Then there's a small Swedish company, which I'm usually forgetting, but I thought today it's good to mention them. They're in like around 10 markets or so. And we're actually today in 16 markets um, offering our solution. And that's really our company vision, where we want to build the global card acceptance brand. And as I've see, shown you on the earlier slide, there's really no brand vis-a-vis -vis the customer, um, because these companies suffer from like traditional infrastructure, where they have different sales teams and so on. And also because, so far, let's be honest, Payment at the point of sale is a luxury product because it's like super expensive. If you run a supermarket chain, you know who your acquirer is. You have a big retail store, you know who your acquirer is. But the small merchant today, he just sees some guy that comes through the door from some kind of a sales organization, 
that puts a terminal into your space, and there's really no brand to be established. And today we have like 10 million terminals in Europe, and I personally think we should more have like 30 to 40 million terminals in Europe because there's a big long tail which is completely underserved today. Our merchants today include the obvious like cafe, restaurants, bars, small retailers, taxi companies, and so on. But I really believe that the market should be in the much longer tail. Your babysitter, your gardener, your handyman, they should be able to accept card payments and make your life and their life easier. And the reason for this is the traditional card present point of sale companies I showed you earlier, for them to serve one of their merchants profitably, they actually need to charge 120 euros net revenue to the merchant, plus then the MasterCard Visa fees and so on on top. Which if I'm a taxi driver in Berlin, where I make on average like six, 700 euros a month, I cannot pay 120 euros for card acceptance. If you look at our merchant base, the average revenue of our merchant is close to 12 euros. So our average is like 10% of that what the traditional players need to serve these small merchants profitably. And we really figured this out in the global scale where we can serve small merchants profitably even at a small, uh, small basket of 12 euros. So now, when Marco asked me to speak today, he was very strong. You need to show KPIs, you need to tell how your business is thriving and so on. And I'm really not big on sharing KPIs because we all know what happens. You pull out your cell phone, you take a picture, you tweet it, and it's all over the internet. So I'll be pretty brief on that one and show you what we achieved in the last 12 months. We now have about 100 million euros in run rate revenue, and that doubled from where we were 12 months ago. And when I say double, that's real organic growth and not the merger with Pelevin, which you probably very much are aware of last year, um, which we announced probably at Money 2020 about a year ago. By now, I'm proud to say we integrated the team, we migrated all the merchants, we rebranded everything to sum up, and we are now strongly positioned on one platform to really become the first ever global card acceptance brand. And in this process, we also broke even. So last year, double in revenue to 100 million, bro breaking even, and doing a pretty significant merger with a company that uh, was in a similar space to us. And on top of it, we actually launched two new countries. And these are not Luxembourg and Belgium, but we actually went to the United States because the United States is a magnetic stripe country. And with a switch to chip, there's quite some opportunity out there. And secondly, to Chile, where the Chilean Central Bank actually retained McKinsey to find the best solution across the world. And they had a long list of like 300 players and in the end selected us. I see a big zero zero um, flashing in front of me. So thank you very much for your attention. At the beginning, I said, I'm not looking to fundraise, and that's true. There's a low likelihood of anything happening in the next 12 to 24 months. But from my experience in fundraising, it's really good to build relationships early. So feel free to talk to me. Maybe we can do something together in 2019. Thank you very much.